Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be talking about units, so follow along in your notes. And If you have any questions, please ask me tomorrow. Alright, to start, let's talk about base units. What are base units? They are anything, okay, any measuring device or any measuring um, unit that you can think of that is based on an object or an event in the physical world. So things like meters, uh, things like seconds, these are all examples of base units. So you might think, what are they actually based on? Well, a meter used to be defined as a physical bar. And so you can go to France, and they actually still have it. It's the original meter bar. Um, I believe it's made out of iridium. I might be a little bit lax in my memory there. But I believe it's made out of iridium. It's no longer a meter, incidentally, because it's decayed away since the last time they actually made one of these bars. But um, that was what a meter was defined as, and so all other meter sticks were based off of that original definition. Um, a second is actually based on a type of nuclear decay, or used to be based off of a type of nuclear decay. That was what a second was defined as. And so you could actually link these different units that we have, like meters and seconds, to an actual object or an event that happened in the physical world, which is kind of useful. Now, what do scientists use? We use SI units of measurement. Now SI stands for this French term, um, and it's all of the kind of units that you are familiar with because of science class, but maybe not because of anything else, especially if you're from the United States. Then meters means almost nothing to you unless you're actually like, you know, a track runner or something like that. All right, so let's talk about the seven SI base units. So what I'd like to do is to just kind of test you guys out and see if you actually know any of these. So here are the terms and uh, what they're used for. See if you can match them before I just kind of fill them in and give you the answer. So if you want to pause, you can. All right, so what do we use to measure time? Well, obviously that is seconds. So I'm just going to put the abbreviation. You can write in the entire word. To measure length, what do we use? Well, we use meters. Makes sense. Mass is measured in grams. Temperature, okay, most of the time people would think that it's Celsius, but it's not Celsius. It's actually a different unit of measurement, which we'll talk about when we deal with gases, and that is Kelvin. All right, the amount of a substance, that is probably the vaguest term on here. That is considered a mole, which is huge in chemistry, so you'll be seeing a lot of moles later. To measure electrical current, right, you got a 50-50 bet here. But electrical current is amps, okay, and that's what an amp here is, it's an amp. And then to measure brightness, it's CD, which is a candela. So these are the seven SI base units. And so anytime we're dealing with time, we'll be using seconds, length will be meters, mass will be grams, temperature will be Kelvin, moles, amps, and candela. Now, can we use other units? Yes, we can. In fact, sometimes we will, but these are the actual SI-based units. All right, so we have these seven units, and they're base units, so we can use them to derive any other unit in science that you can possibly think of, and so that's the reason why we use them, because you can turn them into other units, so it's, it's fantastic. Now, let's think through this. Uh, let's look at volume first. So if you think about, like, a cube, let's say I have a cube that looks like this. If I want to measure the volume of it, what do I need and how can I do it? Um, I need a ruler, okay? And I can uh, just take the length times the width times the height. And so by multiplying those together, I get volume. And so if you think about it, volume is really just meters cubed. Now, there actually is a unit name for that, so we don't call it meters cubed. I mean, you could call it meters cubed, but we like to call those liters. So volume is a derived unit. I can derive it just by using length. That's all I need. What about force? Force is weird. Okay, I'll just tell you that. We're not talking about, like, the Star Wars force. We're talking about, like, physics. So we're talking about physical force. So how does physical force work? All right, I can take meters. I can take kilograms. Now you might think, hey, that's not one of our base units, but it's based on a gram. 
and then I can take seconds squared. And so if I take meters times kilograms divided by seconds squared, I get force. And so what do we call that? We don't just call that meters times kilograms over seconds squared, because that would be a mouthful. I mean, some physicists do, though. But we call that a Newton, named after, you probably guessed it, maybe you didn't, Sir Isaac Newton. Density. All right, so maybe you remember this, maybe you don't. I'm not really sure. But uh, density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. Okay, and so in this case, it can be really anything, but I'm going to try to use the same unit here. So I'm going to use kilograms, okay, and our unit of volume is liters. And so you might think, hey, that's not one of our base units, but I was able to derive it from here. So I'm going to count it as a base unit. All right, and so if you want to know what unit that is, there is no unit for density. It's just measured in kilograms per liter or grams per milliliter or something like that. And then pressure. All right, so pressure is going to go right here because I don't want to run out of room at the bottom. Uh, unit of pressure. So now that I know that newtons exist, I'm just going to use... So I can take force, that's newtons now, and I can divide that by meters. And so newtons over meters, what do we call that? We named that after a different scientist. We call that a pascal of pressure. Okay, so you might think hey, that was a lot, and that was a little confusing. The whole point is, I can take any base unit I like, and from it, I can make these types of things, liters, newtons. And now that I'm able to make liters and make things like newtons, I can now use them as base units and plug them into things like density. Right here, I used liters. Or pressure. Now I plugged that in. Since I know what a Newton is, I can now use that, okay? And so that's how derived units works. All right, last but not least, you might have to freeze frame this just so you can copy some of this down, but there are six prefixes that you actually need to know for this class, okay? I'm giving you more than you need to know just because it might be useful to you at some point, but things like giga and mega are so common because they're used in computing um, I just wanted to include those in there. So you don't actually have to know what a giga anything is or a mega anything is, but um, I just thought I'd give you their symbols anyway. But if you want to make a giga anything, you can have a giga meter, let's say, or like a giga liter of something, then all you do is you add a capital G to the front of any base unit. Um, and that counts as a billion of something. That's what it means. And so in exponent form, that's 10 to the 9th power. Mega, capital M, 10 to the 6th power, that is a million of something. So let's actually go over the ones that you need to know. Kilo, okay, if you have a kilogram, like we just used on the previous slide, or something like a kilometer, you add a lowercase k, that is a thousand of something. So a kilogram is a thousand grams. A kilometer is a thousand meters. Then, okay, we have base units. Okay, this doesn't really count as a conversion, but those are all of those SI units that we talked about. Meters, seconds, candela, amps. Okay, and they all have their own little abbreviations. Now, let's go into the smaller ones, because remember, in chemistry, we're dealing with small things. So we're dealing with things like, you know, atoms um, and things smaller than atoms. So DESA. Desa is a lowercase d, it is 10 to the minus 1, which is 0.1, it's a tenth. Centa, that's c, lowercase that is, 10 to the negative 2, that is a hundredth. Milla is m, 10 to the minus 3, that is a millionth, a millionth, a thousandth, sorry. I got it, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Then we have micro. Now this is the symbol for micro, you might think that's a strange symbol, it is, it's Greek. And the reason why is you can't have two m's, obviously. Milla is already m, so micro has to be a different symbol. So they use a Greek symbol, which looks like a kind of fancy m, or it looks like a u with a teardrop. And so that is a millionth, okay? And so you can think of that as like the opposite of mega. And then obviously we have nano, that is n, and that is 10 to the negative 9, and that is a billionth of something. And so that's when we're dealing with things like, you know, atoms. Yes, there are things that go above, and there are things that go way below this, okay?
but these are the six that you actually need to know in blue. So kilo, deca, centa, milla, micro, and nano. So please try to remember those. And that is it. So if you have any questions, make sure you ask tomorrow.